Hello, hello everyone. How are you today? And today we are painting with Nora. Hi, Nora. Hi. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi, you. So we already have some people here. Hi, Colleen. Hi, V, Ellen, Anna. Thanks for attending. And I hope you are ready with your drawing because we are. And first thing we can notice is that the drawing from Nora is really detailed compared to mine. <laughs> because mine is really <laughs> almost dots. I, I, usually, been... I usually don't draw that much, you know, with gouache, but I was nervous about doing this. So I... Okay, so we have to say that this is the first time Nora is coming live. So thank you for accepting my invitation. You're <laughs> welcome. Really nice. Thanks for inviting me. All right, so we can begin. What are you beginning with? Tell me. Um, I'm going to block in the colors, a little bit of the color and a little bit of the value before I get into the gorgeous detail of, 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 of this sweet little lamb. And I'm working on a gray toned board it's actually a mat board that's toned. Oh, yeah, that's great. Good. Okay. I'm working in the new sketchbook that I bought just yesterday. I'm really happy to find this one because I love square sketchbooks. And this one is a French one. It's a Clairefontaine. Um, it's 100 cotton and it's 300 GSM. This is really something I like, and there is absolutely no texture. It's really, I don't know, almost like Bristol. Not completely, but almost. That's nice for gouache. Yeah, I love it for gouache. It's really great. All right, so I'm, I'm beginning by the water. Let's say it's water behind the, the little lamp. I don't know. Okay, so you're using a watery consistency so far? A little bit watery. Um, yeah, not too watery, just, you know, a little bit. Um, I'm not used to working on this kind of board, so I'm kind of seeing what it will take. Mm -hmm. Oh, it behaves. Yep. Yeah, okay, that's the same for me because it's the first time I'm using this sketchbook, so I need to see how the paper is taking the paint. They are not all taking the paint the same way. This is something weird. I just bought some Clairefontaine uh, mixed media paper and I'm anxious to try it. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, we have, we have several good brands here. My favorite one is Arch, but it's really expensive. So I think this is enough for um, going live. This is so Having funny fun. to paint with somebody. <laughs> ah, yeah, it's different. Definitely different. Mm, yeah, so you've been inviting people. I see that on the Yes. Chat. <laughs> That's great. Ooh, you are much faster than I am. Should I slow um, down? <laughs> no, 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 no. Go your way. Go your way. <laughs> Hi everyone. Hi Archana. Archana has been painting with me two times ago, I think. We were painting the old portrait. Yeah, I think I need to go darker in the background. Yeah, I'm I'm squinting my eyes a lot to just try to get the basic values and then I I always have to fight with myself because I'm so tempted to just get into his fur, you know, <laughs> I just love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yes, I know. You want to do the best first, but you have to keep it for after. <laughs> and, and I'm, well, I'm it, sorry. I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I apologize that I can't, my palette doesn't show up and we're, we're having trouble with my camera and I can't quite figure out how to get the palette in there. But um, I'm just, you know, mixing blues and greens and just trying to get the value more than the color. 
Yeah, and are you able to get the value correct at the first time? Because I always have to go back and correct some values at some point because it's never the good value at the first time. I don't know why. Maybe it's my brain. Some Sometimes yes, sometimes no. I mean... Yeah, it depends. What I am doing intentionally is making a very cool background behind the sheep, the, the lamb, so you can have a warmer paint for the lamb and it will really pop out on the background. This is my goal anyway. And the top is much more brownish, I think. Yeah, yeah, something like that. So I think we have people that are painting along with us. Oh, how if nice. Have, yeah, I think we have, but it's tricky to ask people to post a comment when they are painting because you are focused on your painting when you do. But if you have any questions for either Nora or I, or me, I don't know, uh, you can post a comment and I am seeing the comments. So I can tell Nora about the questions. I'm really curious to see how you paint because your style is really specific, very distinctive. Thank uh, you. I have to watch the replay after because I can't <laughs> paint and watch you at the same time. <laughs> you know, for most of my life, from teenage up, I was trained as a mostly watercolorist. So when I discovered gouache, it, it was like, holy cow, like, like a whole other world of of expression, you know, where I could use these big fat brush strokes and, and, you know, that word painterly, you know, I, because when I work with watercolor, I tend to be more uh, illustration focused. It just, my brain just starts working like that. You know, I'll do line work and then a nice wash or it, it's just how my brain works. And you know, it was such a wonderful thing to be able to work in this way that I don't feel I, I can do with 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 uh, watercolors. So I, I kind of, in the last couple of years especially, have been going crazy with it. Um, you know, getting, using, like I'm using a very big brush, you know, compared to the size of this painting. And i uh, I, I'll continue most likely to use it for as long as I possibly can because I love seeing the strokes, you know, seeing these brush strokes and... Yeah, there is a question about um, what size of the, is the brush you're using right now? You have an ID. Can you show us maybe with your thumb or something? Because mine is, I think, a bit smaller than yours. It oh, looks yeah. like it's about a three quarter inch brush and it's a flat angle uh -huh. brush. I, I don't buy expensive brushes for gouache. I, no. I have mm -hmm. some gorgeous brushes for watercolor, but I, I gouache is, I find very rough on brushes and they're just, it, it just feels pretty impossible to get all the pigment out of it. No matter how well you rinse it. Um, I love using the flat angle brush. I also have it in a much small, the camera's reversed, in a much smaller size with this one is like a, I think a half inch. I even have a tiny, teeny tiny one. I love flat brushes. Um, I guess because it's just so different than what I would normally do with watercolors. Oh yeah, it is different from watercolor. And we were discussing before 
the live and I said that I don't like watercolor because I'm so used to gouache. You can't control everything with gouache. I, I don't like the lack of control with watercolor. <laughs> yeah, it does take, uh, it takes getting used to, I think that the lack of control is sort of the part of the beauty of it. Once, you know, once you can, I mean, it's not for everybody, like anything, you know, people hate gouache. A lot of people can't stand it. Yeah, I know. It's a bit tricky at first. Yep. But once you get the hand of it, really, it's, it's so versatile. You can do almost anything. I, I had, I had been to, art university, art high school, um, private tutoring. I never heard of gouache. Oh. I don't know if my heart just wasn't in it. Maybe they did mention it and I could care less at that time. I don't know. Um, I'm starting to just lay in the sheep. Um, and how did you discover gouache? When I started painting again, I started going down the YouTube rabbit hole. Oh, um, and I was like, gosh, what's that? I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm a senior citizen, you know, trained in art, and I never heard of it. Mm. <laughs> senior citizen. Yeah, I shouldn't have said that. But um, So I, I had I was following I, uh, Steve Mitchell, The Mind of Watercolor, and he was talking about, you know, a way to see if you like gouache is to just buy a tube of white gouache and mix it with some of your watercolors and see how you like the feel of it. So I tried that, and I immediately was like, bingo. And I then spent some money. <laughs> bought a cheap set of gouache to play with it. And I, that was it. There was no turning back. Oh, yeah. There is a question for you. Uh, did you find it difficult to use in gouache when you are coming from watercolor? I personally did different. not. I personally did not. In fact, I, I do a lot of commission work and every commission that I've ever done in the last four years has been in gouache because it's, it's, it's so much easier to correct mistakes um, oh, yeah. with the gouache. <laughs> you oh, know, yeah. you don't want to work eight hours on a painting and then screw it up. So if you do screw it up after all that time, you can fix it. It's pretty fixable with gouache, you know? Oh yeah, I know. It's very easy to very easy why it's easy easier than watercolor much anyway. easier yeah watercolor, watercolor you got to think ahead a lot yeah you have to plan everything before applying a single brush stroke yeah um so it just came i don't know i just it came to me pretty easily i i mean i was i'm constantly painting i do i paint plain air almost daily I, I, I watched a zillion, you know, other artists and I learn from them and I learn from doing, um, it wasn't hard for me. I think it would be hard for someone who's into gouache to then go to watercolor. I think that's a hard transition, you know, because all of a sudden you can't correct the mistakes in the same way you can't, <laughs> you know, but go <laughs> Going from, from watercolors to this, it's like, whoa, this is Christmas. <laughs> I, could, <laughs> I could screw it up and, and, and you know, still fix it up. Yes. Um, there is a question regarding the sheep. Um, I'm using white and yellow ochre and a bit of black and blue as well, because I see a lot of blue in the sheep. And I think you are seeing it too, Nora. Yes, I am. The, yeah. his, the shadows on his hind legs and his face are very blue. Yeah, the face is really blue. It's almost turquoise. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Gorgeous color. And this is the kind of thing you don't see when you just look at a photo. You see it only when you are painting it. 
Right. Because you have to be very precise in the reflections. I think that's also, you know, like for me personally, um, the plein air painting has helped me tremendously because it's just fascinating what is really in front of you and what you think you see, you know, what you think you see. And then you look at something that is that you think might just be one color and it's just endless. Oh, yeah. You know, and you don't see that in a photograph. No, for sure. But it depends on the weather also because. Sure. That's a problem with the plein air because the light is changing so fast. Yeah. You, you better be quick. And you are using a airtight palette for going plein air? I have this, yeah, this palette. I take this with me wherever I go and I spray it with some distilled water and um, a little bit of, of vinegar. Ah, yeah. To and so far, so good. Yeah. Okay. Because I had just molding in my Stay Wet palette with acrylic paint. I never had this problem before. Huh. I had a huge molding. Everything was black. Always mushrooms everywhere. <laughs> that was really disgusting. So I had to throw everything away, but never mind. I live in New York and um, I also do a lot of plain air. I don't live in Manhattan. I live outside of the city. And I I do a lot of plain air painting in my car. I have a little, you know, because either with watercolors or gouache, you, you don't need a huge setup. It's so mobile. Mm -hmm. So I do a lot from my car you know sometimes the situation is just such that i don't feel like being outside whether it's weather or the area there's a lot of people and i don't want them to see me painting because you know i'm sketching them or you know mm -mm. yeah i get that <laughs> all kinds of reasons and then you know if i find the opportunity to sit at a picnic table or you know on a bench somewhere i do that too um I have an, uh, an easel. I have, a, I mean, you know, one of those gorilla painter pochade boxes, but I rarely use it because I'm so used to drawing on my lap. Mm. I'm so used to painting on my steering wheel that, you know, um, I, I can't get used to using the pochade box with a, with a tripod. I have the whole setup in my car and I just never use it. Mm. Yeah, I must say I'm a bit lazy to go outside. I like the <laughs> comfort. I like the comfort of my studio. I should go a bit more outside, but laziness. For me, it's also just it just helps psychologically to be out there with people, and because I'm on my own, and yeah. it just helps to be out there, and you know. I yeah, I get that. I understand. Yeah. And it's just fabulous okay. practice for me. Um, question about the kind of paint brushes. I'm using uh, synthetic brushes. This one is an etcher. This is the one from the gouache set by etcher. I love it. They are really cool. But you can use any cheap brush you like. Yep. yep. It works well with gouache, really. It doesn't damage the brushes. And I'm more about using something cheap that you are willing to use rather yeah. than something so fancy that you don't dare using it. I agree. Great. So I'm using a lot of colors in the fur, so to speak. Oh, yeah. We don't have the same at all. That's fun. Love it. We don't have what? The same sheep. <laughs> <laughs> they are very different. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> this is the thing. I wanted to see your style on this one. Um, I, I love we are it. using uh, flat brushes together. This is the same thing for us. Yep. The great thing is to show the backlit. That is really 
like a halo around the sheep. Yep. It's kind of difficult. I find that with something like a sheep, something that's very light in color, the hardest thing is to wait until close to the end to add those the gorgeous bright white highlights. I want to yeah. add them like immediately. I, I oh, always yeah. wear, but I know that they're not going to show up if I, it doesn't work, you know, if, if you do them too early on and they don't stand out the same way. So someone is saying, Colleen, yeah, hi, Colleen. Uh, never heard of vinegar. I have heard of using a drop of two of clove oil and you are using white, white vinegar, I guess. In your... I'm using white vinegar. Um, I had heard from uh, Lena Revo. She had mentioned mm -hmm. um, using d the distilled water with a little tiny bit of hydrogen peroxide. Yeah, I, I did that for a while, but it it a couple of the colors had developed a little bit of mold. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's also tricky with colors because it depends on which you know, certain colors or certain paint manufacturers might tend to develop mold more than others if they have honey in them. Yeah, um, that's the case for uh, Embraham. This is why I don't right. buy them anymore because they are molding every time because I have the same airtight palette than you and I'm storing it in my fridge between two painting sessions and it helps, really. Yeah, I love the M. Graham um, watercolors. My palette is at least half of them are the M. Grahams, but and and I love the company. They're incredible with with customer service, and I I just love them. But with the gouache, because I'm using the airtight palette now, you know, I think about about that stuff. Uh, because they, they are good quality, but really the molding, it's yeah. wasting paint. I don't like that. Okay. I like to make a check on texture, so I want to push my painting to the camera so you can see so far. Um, I'm building layers of oh. paint. <laughs> so different, huh? Yes, they are very different. There's mine. That's cool. That's really cool. So I'm building layers, uh, increasing the consistency at each layer. This is just a video I made. My last video is about layering gouache because this is a question I get all the time. I get muddy colors. Yeah, but there are some tips to avoid this. Yep. Okay, a bit of, yeah, I'm going to the white. It's too early. No, <laughs> <laughs> it's like the white is the jewel, you know, like when I, you know, I've got hundreds of, at least a hundred paintings of my coffee cups. I just love doing them in the morning. It, it's just great practice for me to get going for that day. And I just can look at the same thing over and over again and see different things in it. You know, I'm still not bored of it. I just love it. And I'm always like it, literally almost itching to, to, you know, put in the hot, the gorgeous little twinkly highlights. Yes. Itching. That's exactly that. <laughs> you know, and, and I just have to force, you know, it's like looking at a piece of candy and you can't have it. You know, you have to wait because <laughs> you know what that highlight's going to do. It's going to change the whole thing. Yes. <laughs> but you but can't you do it resist. yet. Yeah, keep resisting. So I will switch to a smaller brush now because I want to make the ears and I'm not sure I can do that with my flat brush. So I'm using a round brush now. But I will go back to the flat brush later, I think. Uh, some pinkish something creamy color for the inside of the ear my brush sort of split so I, I i use it i like using it to create texture in the grass you know blend it in a little bit it's 
is a very soft pink. I cannot resist anymore. I have to go for <laughs> it. <here. laughs> yeah, it will change everything. I'm sure of it. And some very strong color in the middle, just here. It's very strong. Oh, yes, it's doing <laughs> everything. Yeah, I had my candy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I could even let the white of the paper as it is. I'm just looking at my painting. And as I am using a white paper, I think that would be kind of enough to let the paper to show. Yeah, so you have a question, Nora. Uh, uh -oh. It's Carla. It's <laughs> Carla from St. Louis. I guess you know her. Oh, okay. Um, Hi, Carla. I, I love their sketchbooks. Their watercolor books are great. Okay. So are you blending the edges of two colors with a slightly dumb brush with no paint on it? Mm -hmm. Yes, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. Um, I, I do that a lot because I, I, you know, you get to a point where you have so much color in there that it does get muddy. So yeah, this brush right now is just damp. So I'm using it to soften up his tail, his sweet little tail. <laughs> yeah, I think I will just let the white of the paper shine and I will be adding some titanium white to make sure there is a really opaque coverage with the white. And what about the face? Some nose maybe. While I can still see my drawing under and then I will go for the the grass. I see I see you've been <laughs> doing the grass. Not I haven't been touching it yet. This this is the part that I've been waiting for his ears. <laughs> Just <laughs> it's nice to to be excited about such a silly little thing like that. Like if that can excite you in life, you're lucky, you know? Yes. Yeah, and I think that art should be fun and excitement. So this is great to find someone who's excited as like I am. With oh, the same thank thing. you. That's fun, really. I love being with someone on the live session. It's <laughs> you, feel, you feel less crazy, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> My mother was a sculptress and she used to always say, I hate hanging out with normal people. You know, I, I love hanging out with artists. They're, they're as crazy as I am. Oh, this is <laughs> so true. So true. I love how your paintings are both so lovely while being so different. Isn't yeah. that amazing? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. That's really sweet. Um, uh, there's a lot of, um, you know, paint these in your style challenges on, on Instagram. And I love those because it's just amazing. It yeah. never ceases to amaze me how yeah. different a thousand artists can interpret the same thing. Yeah, I agree with you. All right, let's go for some textures in the grass because my grass is kind of boring so far. <laughs> I haven't looked, I'm so focused on my- Yeah, I know. We are focused on our own paintings, so. So I'm back to my flat brush and I'm using the edge of the brush to mimic the grass. This is a brush that I recently discovered at Bix when I always go there and spend way too much money for 10 things that I absolutely don't need. Ah. And wait, I put it in water and show. 
it's a pointed filbert. Oh, yeah. And I'm always looking. Why isn't it? Wait. How we? Oh, okay. I, I always have a really hard time getting a brush that makes a fine line. And I love this brush. I bought two more in case so that I have one in my plain air kit and I have one at home. I love it. And which brand is it? Is it Escoda? No, I don't use expensive for, for gouache. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a Princeton. Uh-huh. Okay. I see. They were pretty cheap, maybe five or six dollars. I, oh. I do not spend money for that's really the most cheap. expensive brush I did treat myself to. I just had to have it. Was was the Princeton Aqua what is it? The Princeton Neptune. And I have so many brushes like this, but the reason I had I wanted this is because of the handle. I just love the handle because it reminds me of sea glass. Oh yeah. It's just, it's just a ridiculous reason to buy a brush, but it's mm. the, one of the few times that I spent money on a brush. This is marketing. They know what they do. Absolutely. Yeah. I had, I know what you mean because I just bought recently a brush because of the handle and the ferrule, which is uh, blue as well. It's uh, <laughs> It's magic blue. I, I love this color. <laughs> but you gotta it's be actually, happy. It's good quality, but I think we need to be happy when we are painting and we are using our supplies. So it's better to have some I agree. really cool stuff. And after all, we are professional, so we can. can right, we justify it. <laughs> <laughs> Just. <laughs> trying to get an excuse because oh no no it's my job so i have to do it i need to buy this uh yeah. and you've been giving me an idea to buy casein so it will be another thing to buy <laughs> thanks <laughs> by the so way so you're gonna blame <laughs> you're gonna blame me okay oh uh, nora is as precious as sea glass oh md campbell MD Campbell is saying that. I, I suppose you, you know. He has a YouTube channel. He's he's fabulous. Thank you, Mark. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he made your day. <laughs> yeah, that was sweet. Yeah, I, I, I feel like, you know, I had a lot of a crisis in my life. And I feel like, man, if I could get pleasure from buying a few art supplies and painting my heart out, life is good. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I see what you mean. I mean, art is great for this because you can really escape from reality when you absolutely. want to. Absolutely. We all need that. That's for sure. Yeah. 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 Even if the COVID is over or kind of, still it's a good thing. And when, some days I don't have time to, to paint a big, big painting. So I have a small sketchbook, very, very tiny one. Uh -huh. and I always paint something every day. Yep. I right. need to. If I don't, I feel like the day is wasted. That's really weird, but I weird. agree. It, it's like a daily meditation. I mean, it really is. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it is exactly. And once you get used to it, you, you cannot stop. You know who got me started with... Um, doing a daily sketch was uh, Danny Gregory from sketchbook school. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah. Right. He, he went through tremendous tragedy and the sketchbooking was his way of coping and coming through the other end of it. And his, his video art before breakfast, that was just about when I was kind of rediscovering paint and artist grade watercolors and 
I watched that video. I've watched it at least 15 times. And that got me it starting to into the habit of sketching my coffee cup every morning. I sketched my breakfast, you know, toast or whatever, or tea bit. And, and it just got me into that habit. And I haven't stopped. Like I said, I have about 30 sketchbooks filled. Amazing. I just, like you, I don't feel right if I don't do something. And it does, yeah. you know, I have these tiny little sketchbooks from Legion paper. They're like the size of a, of a baseball card. And I'll do something on there if I'm not in the mood to do something larger. Okay, so we have some questions. Um, oh, Miss Ned is saying, this is fascinating to watch. I think I may have found my new passion. Yeah, welcome. To oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so underrated. It's, I love it, but you know that. Uh, I'm also rambling in my gouache box because we have a question about the brand we are using of gouache. Okay. Uh, mine are mainly this Holbein sets. Um, they are very pigmented and they are very affordable. I mean, compared to the quality you have, it's really, I think, the best bet I have found to my taste. I'm not saying this is the absolute best. And plus, I'm using any other brand I have because I have a ton of it i've been testing a lot and you what about you nora um holbein i absolutely love and i use windsor and newton um for certain colors that i can't get from holbein um i i i tried this schminka and i do love it but to me it's just a pain in the butt to to get it because I'm in the United States and it's very expensive to get it here. So, yeah. you know, I ordered it from Jackson's in the UK, but I, I'm not patient for, I, I want, if I, I want it in my hand you know, right away. Yeah, I agree with you because I have been using also Horadam Gouache. The, um, they have two brands, the Academy right. and the Horadam. And this one is the Horadam. This is the most expensive gouache you can get. Yep. Uh, I'm showing a tube. It's 15 milliliter and it's about $15. So, yeah, that's it's not worth it. it. And I'm not sure it's worth it. If you're interested in that, you can dig in my YouTube channel. I made a review of the Horadam and a review of the Holbein as well. I mean, if you live in Germany, you know, it's probably cheap. You know, it's much cheaper, seven or eight dollars a tube. And then it's absolutely worth it. It's it's wonderful quality. But if you don't live there, then to me, Holbein is so, is wonderful, and it's so easy to get for me. I just Blix has a humongous assortment of them. Um, yeah, and they are so pigmented. I really love them. Yep, the Holbein are really cool. And you know, I live in France. It's close to Germany, but they are also very very expensive here. Uh huh. Schmink or Adam. So I'm using now some titanium white, just pure from the tube, very thick to exaggerate the backlight around the shape of the lamp. Some parts I have left the paper untouched, and some part I'm just fixing with some titanium white which is the most opaque white you can get i'm adding a little bit of lavender into the water just because i love it <laughs> just and yeah. it, it goes it seems to go nicely with it you know you, you, I, I i've learned not to i don't have to be faithful to the photograph you know cameras or for photographs, but you know, you do what your heart tells you to do or. Yes, obviously. So I'm, I'm trusting that more than I used to. We are the artists, so we know exactly what to do. Or we, we, we try <laughs> to, to know what to do. 
And we want you to believe we know what we do, but sometimes we don't. <laughs> I need more light in my grass. I think the grass is really overshaded, overlit. Another question for both. Do you work from the tube or do you ever pour into pans to dry? Oh, never pans. No, 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 no. Well, I actually, let me see if I can get this on camera. This is my old way of painting. I used to have the M. Gray M. Gouache and I used to pour it in this palette and I didn't, it took longer for them to dry out. And, but I didn't mind using it dry. I got used to painting that way for a couple of years. I didn't want to bother with the wet paint, with the fresh paint, with the mold, all that stuff. And I thought, you know, everyone's talking about it. Maybe there's something to it. Let me try it. So I did. And I still, I could go either way. Um, but the fresh, it's, it's just more, it's just convenient. Real, you know, you always have this nice concentrated color right there in front of you as opposed to reactivating the dry yeah and i'm using the same palette than you but i'm keeping it fresh inside um i'm spraying it store it in the fridge and it stays really clean and when i'm using it i'm just spraying with tap water. I don't mind with this hill water. I'm just using tap water. That's fine. Uh -huh. And from time to time, I clean everything because I'm filming a lot of videos. So it has to be clean sometimes. Yeah. This, this brush, I buy very cheap, like I said, <laughs> cheap brushes from a craft supply store. And this brush is so abused and messed up that all the bristles are split. Wait. Mm. Yeah. And I it's it's I will not go anywhere without this brush. I love it because it's 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 so great for um for texture. I'm mm. going to I'll show you right now. Yeah, I also keep my damaged brush for textures. Uh, um, Very important. And I just, I guess, what's the word? Stipple? Oh, yeah. And I use my finger a lot to melt it in. Whatever works. Yeah, and I'm using a very thick paint. And there is very, very few paint on my brush. And I'm rubbing the edge of the brush to give the texture of the light on the fur. So it's very, very light touches. The hard part with this is knowing when to stop because I I could do I could do this fur for hours and just <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. Okay, well, I think we are close to the end anyway. Really? Well, nope. that went fast. No. I, I... How long do you think you need more? Not much. I mean, I'm just, I'm just surprised. <laughs> Not in a bad way. I just. Yeah, this one was not really complicated to paint. No. Strangely, the coffee cup was more difficult than the little lamb. You think because it was more specific, like the shape and the... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So, Nora, I see that you're using pure white highlights now, but it looks like you mixed a fair amount of white into your colors much earlier. Is that correct? Or do you use another color to lighten values? Um, I, I use the zinc white uh, to, sometimes to lighten the value. It depends on what I'm, like with the grass, I, I used a lot of zinc white because I didn't want it to look too bluish because I wanted it to be like a bright yellow. And the zinc white will, 
help with that. Um, yeah, I agree. And then that the tit huh? titanium is a bit bluish. So you have right. to take this in consideration when you are using it. Right. This is a tiny bit of yellow with, with the zinc white that I'm using right now. Ted, uh, so Michael Feldman says, Hi, Ted Michael. Says, <laughs> Ted says, nice job, Nora. So I guess you know him as well. <laughs> yeah. He, he was asking me, he was asking, I think, a while ago about lessons. And, you know, I have some people asking me if, if I teach. And I just, at this moment, I don't because I, I'm just enjoying doing this, you know. <laughs> Yeah, at my own yeah. speed. Um, I've never been in this position before where I could just do what I want and not, I, you know, I honestly don't, I don't rely on this for income and I've never been in a position like this in my life. And I went through hell and back to, to get to this position and I don't know if it'll last, but for now I'm enjoying the heck out of my freedom, like income wise. Um, of course I want to, you know, sell my work. I have plenty of it on sale in my Etsy shop. I, but I just, as far as teaching at this moment, I, I don't, but Michael had asked me and, um, I remember, and he's got a beautiful dog named Ted. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. And people can find you on Instagram, I'm typing in the chat your handle on Instagram. Thank you. So if they want to see what you are doing, go to your Etsy shop and support you by buying your art. This is where. Yeah, on my Instagram, in the bio, there's a direct link there to the Etsy shop. That would be the easiest way for you to find it. Yeah, I guess so. Okay, I think I'm done. What about you? One second. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So I make a check of textures, as always. Um, I could have worked a bit more in the background, but now it's done, so that's fine. And there are actually a ton of colors in the fur itself. I've been using white, blue, pink, yellow ochre, black, brown, a bit of green in the legs. So there is a reflection of the grass. And also it helps to integrate a bit more the feet in the grass. Yeah, it, you always feel like there's more you can do, you know, and I think that that's the hard thing to uh, when you're yeah. able to walk away, you know, and to know when to stop is the most difficult. And as I have time, I'm going back on the nose and this is where the problems will begin. <laughs> <laughs> I know that, but I'm still doing it. They I say that many paintings were ruined by that by the phrase. Let me just fix this one thing. Yeah, and this is exactly what I did. <laughs> I made a mistake. <laughs> I'll stop. Oh, fuck. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure you don't live in New York? <laughs> no, but what is funny is that I say it in French. So it, it sounds less harsh when it's said in English during a, a French sentence. But of course, now is not the time to say it. Oh, my husband was Greek, and when he'd curse in Greek, I was like, oh, that's so pretty. <laughs> yeah, it could curse in French. Yeah, it's beautiful in French and Spanish and Italian. Yeah, when it's not your language. <laughs> right, exactly. But I really made a big mistake. <laughs> okay, stop it now. <laughs> Woo. Oh, that was funny. Don't touch it. Yeah, I think it's it's fun because we have really two different paintings from the same image. I'll show you the image again because... Oh, yeah. 
it's something did you place a tape around it yeah yes i did okay I, I had taped the board to a, um, should I untape it? Yeah, if you want. Yes. That's always so sexy, right? Oh, yeah, it is. That's <laughs> all <So> Instagram. <laughs> it's so Instagram worthy. Yeah. Oh, you had two tapes. Yeah, because I was using this very skinny tape, which oh. I'll never buy again, but I'm trying to use it up. Okay. I'm almost there. This was comp. I don't usually. It's usually not that complicated, but I'm placing you full screen so we can see how you. Oh boy! Remove the tape. Now I'm nervous. <laughs> no, 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 you should not. And always pull the tape away. I learned that. Yeah. Never ever pull it. Always pull it away from the paper or the board. I didn't think I'd be untaping it. This. Ah. Ah, sometimes it doesn't go as planned. I know. And Colin <laughs> is saying, well, I'm not done. You both paint very fast, but I have <laughs> had a lot of fun and learned a ton from both of you. Don't yeah. tell that to my clients. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe I should add a tiny bit of white in the eye. Oh, yeah, I I, it's that. not in the photo, but to me, it's everything. Yeah, I see what you mean. But if I do that, maybe I should not. Well, let's do it. I have a, a client who has a farm in British Columbia, and she's one of my best clients, my best lovely lady and she's got so many farm animals and i've done i never thought i would like love painting farm animals as much as i do but i love it and that little twinkle it's like it's not done until you put that little twinkle in the eye it uh, just really does become alive you know yeah exactly nora you have a question what kind of board did you use I have a very minimal set. This is just a clipboard. Yeah, I made some nice clipboard, and I just because I wanted it to be at an angle. I do have a table easel that I could have put it up on, but I wanted to use what I'm used to so that I'd be comfortable doing this live stream. I didn't no, want to no, use stuff that I'm not familiar with. I think it's a board by itself, the one you were taking uh, painting on. Sorry. Oh, this is a, if you go to a frame shop. Or there's a company called clearbags.com. They sell like a lot of packaging supplies. And, and um, I buy packaging supplies from them when I'm shipping out my paintings. They uh -huh. sell stacks of, of, of um, pre-cut mat boards. And they give you just a whole assortment. You can't tell them what colors you want. But you get a whole stack of, of mat boards. They're archival. They're acid-free. And they're just assorted colors. So I've been playing around with those to use for my gouache and also for my casein because casein needs a stronger surface than gouache does. Um, okay. It's fun. And you could go to a frame shop and ask them if they've got any, you know, throwaways or if they could sell you some, you know, cuts that are, that they're not using that are mistakes or whatever. And I'm sure they'll either give them to you or sell them to you cheap. All right. Yep. Okay. I know there are also some um, cardboards, heavy cardboards that I'm using that are made for mixed media painting. Uh huh. Uh, but it's white. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. And MG Campbell is saying Carla J frame shops always have tons of cutout extras, and most will get them for free. Right. Yeah. You have to dig into it. Well, I think we're done. It's it's an hour as usual, so that's cool. Thanks everyone for being there. Thank and you very much, Cecile. Thanks thank everybody you, for coming. Yeah, and next week we will be I will be painting alone, but if someone is willing to join, you're welcome. <laughs> uh we'll be painting a peacock just for a chance and a lot of colors and will be fun. Thank you, Nora. And you're very welcome. Everyone. Thanks. Bye -bye. I enjoyed it. Bye-bye.